So, tell me about where it all began, man. Where did you pick up the bass? Where did it start? Okay, right from from the very beginning. The very okay, and uh, well, in high school I played the uh, baritone, so that's where the music started. Okay, playing the baritone, and then during high school I started. I really started liking music. My uncle brought me to some great concerts. Okay. I went and saw David Bowie. Went to cool. saw Queen. Cool. And uh, and I go, I dig this. I think I might want to do some of this. Nice. So then I started learning bass, started learning how to play bass. I was probably 16, okay. 15, 16. So I started learning bass, and then one of the bands in high school took me on for a couple of gigs, and I sang with them. Oh, cool. I did some singing, some punk rock. What was the name of that band? And I go, I th The Clients. The Clients. And I go, wow, I think I like punk rock. I think <laughs> I'm going to play some of that. I, I started wor working on the bass, getting better and better, and then I found a friend that wanted to get together and start playing some songs. So we put together a band called Vinyl Shake. Vinyl Shake, nice. And it was him and I and another guy playing drums. Just a rocky, just kind of a rock sound. Yeah. And, uh, and we, uh, we played around at different parties, had a great time, learned all the, all the cover tunes right. we liked. We pr right. learned some Police and David Bowie and all that stuff we liked. Right. And we started writing songs. So we wrote probably 20 songs together. Never recorded anything other than just on a cassette tape in the garage. Yeah, yeah, but they were pretty cool. And we would listen to those, give them to our friends. Oh, look at our, we got these original songs. This is our new new album on cassette. <laughs> and then I had a friend that comes to me and he goes, Hey, uh, I'm playing in this new band and they need a bass player. You think you'd be interested in playing? And, and I go, yeah, yeah, I would. I go, I've... I've seen you play before, and he played in a band called uh, LAX. He was going to this new band called Easter. Gotcha. And he said, you want to jump into the band with me? So I I go, yeah, that, let's go try it out. He goes, yeah, come out for a tryout with, uh, and see how, see how Danny and John like you. And I, right. and I go, okay, cool. So I went and tried it out, and immediately they said, yeah, we want you in. So we started putting songs together, and uh, I'm learning the songs that they had, and right. and uh, we started playing a lot. We were playing two, three times a week. We started getting a little bit of a buzz. There was some people coming around, and they're going, hey, we might want to record you guys. So then uh, eventually we get a offer to do a recording at Radio Tokyo in Santa, in, uh, not Santa Monica, in uh, Venice. Right. That's where the Descendants recorded, and all kind, all kinds of the best bands in the right, '80s right. recorded there, '70s and '80s. Right. Age and Orange. Right. So we, uh, so we went there and did this recording, and then right away a record label goes, "Yeah, we we like the recording. We'd like you to do a full album." Nice. So we went back to Radio Tokyo and finished it and did a whole album. Nice. That was the first Easter album that was re released on. On uh, Chameleon Records, and then after that came out, it ended up on K Rock and was getting heavy rotation on K Rock. So then, the at that, that time, happened. Capital picked up the record for distribution. It was still on Chameleon. Yeah. First single was Lights Out, and we did a video. We went out and did a video, and during that time, our guitar player was having some drug problems. So he said, "I'm going to go back to Philadelphia and try to clean up." I don't want to hold you guys back anymore. I'm, I'm going to leave the band, find someone else. And at that time, Mike Ness had been hanging out with us, and he said, hey, That's Mike Ness from Social Distortion. I'm having some drug problems, and you guys seem to be pretty sober. You're, you don't go out and get wasted. You're not doing drugs. think I could play with you for a while. And we said, yeah, we need a guitar player. Jump on in. And he loved it because he got some spending money. And with us, he wasn't getting influenced to do drugs. So <laughs> right, right. he was doing AA, NA. He was cleaning up. It was awesome. So we did that for a while. We did some tours with him. And then he was recording this second uh, Social Distortion record, Prison Bound. And his manager said, no more Easter. You can't play with those guys. You can't be associated with them. When that happened... He said, hey, I got a suggestion for you. You could probably pick up Brent, which was, Brent Lyles, right? yeah, Brent Lyles was also in Social Distortion, and he was having drug problems. <laughs> <laughs> so 
so in came, came Brett. House. In came Brett, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and straight, we went straight on tour with Brett, and he was awesome. One of my best buddies. He was one of the best, and so good on tour, so easy. Such a road dog. He could right. do anything. And then along the way, Chameleon went out of business. They lost all their money. They invested all into heavy metal and thought that that was going to be the new craze, and they went bankrupt. And then Capital picked up some of the bands, but we didn't get picked up by Capital. We were still doing recording, and we were trying to find another label. And during that time, it took a while. During that time, I, I was playing also in another band called Love Dog. Get these feelings I feel that are deep in my soul when I look into your eyes. Does it come from above? Does it come from below? I need to realize. Is there a God above me? Is there a devil down below? Is there a God above me? This I gotta know. Devil or angel, give me a sign. Sign I do not fear It's hard to make an end sense of it From everything I hear Is there a God above me? Is there a devil down below? Is there a God above me? This I gotta know Some people are vindictive And some are out of line so devil or angel, let me know, give me a sign. Get these feelings I feel that are deep in my soul when I look into your eyes. Does it come from above? Does it come from below? I need to realize, is there a God above me? Is there a devil down below? Is there a God above me? This I gotta know, yeah! I was like their fill-in. It was an all-girl band, and I was filling in. I filled in on bass, filled in on guitar, whatever they needed. Whoever had quit, I was the, that player. Things we had some managers with Easter and they couldn't pull things together and and we kind of broke up and they went on their way and got a new bass player and then I moved in to playing with Love Dog. And we had a similar thing go on where we were the darling of Hollywood, everybody wanted to sign this band, Love Dog. And we recorded an album, three girls and then then a guy came in, so it was so then it ended up Two guys, two girls, okay, gotcha. and then three girls. One came in and out. The bass player was in and out. Gotcha. So it was three girls, two guys, and uh, sometimes it was three girls, one guy, just me. Gotcha. Started out with just me, and then sure. we added another guy, and he, he was great. He played with us mm -hmm. for quite a few years. And we had all these offers, and all the record companies were fighting. They were going to get us, and, yeah. and we ended up doing a recording that was – supposed to be on a record label and then right before the release they something happened i don't know what happened and uh years later i found out it was a weird thing but i think we got blackballed <laughs> we just put out the album on our own and we did a bunch of touring and then our drummer comes to me one evening we rehearsed and she comes over and she goes hey uh i have a question for you this is really serious. She goes, uh, you know that band that we play with, Four Non Blondes, when we go up north and then they come and play in our shows down here? I go, yeah. She goes, uh, they're offering for me to go play drums for them. And I go, well, what are they offering you? And she goes, oh, they're going to pay my rent. They're going to pay my apartment. They're going to, and they're going to give me some walking around cash money. And then I'm going to record on their record and then we're going to do some touring. And I go, Leave right now. Go start right now. Go do it. <laughs> You're not going to ever get that offer. She goes, yeah, but you guys are so close. And they're, you know, I go, yeah, but they're already giving you an offer. Go, go. Right. So she went to Four Non Blondes, and then we, we continued playing oh, with Love Dog, and we had, a, we had yeah. brought in another drummer. And 
played for several years after that yeah. and uh and eventually the record deals that we had the record deals never came to fruition a, a big yeah big time record deal right, right, right. so we just yeah. had our we recorded a second record and we put that out on our own as well yeah. and uh, and then eventually sherry decided she wanted to move up to san francisco so we ended up breaking up she moved up to san francisco and we all went our separate ways yeah. And years later, she did a movie called Pray for Rock and Roll with some of the songs and some new songs she wrote from Love Dog. From Love Dog. Nice, nice. And a, the movie is about Love Dog. Oh, nice. Except I was written out because it became an all-girl band in the movie, <laughs> <laughs> which is really cool. It was <laughs> right, right, a cool right. movie. Right. And Gina Gershon is the star in the movie. Very cool. And then from there, I went to a band called... CC and the Jackpot Prize. And this, yeah, and this was with the drummer from Mary's Danish, and he was friends all along. He played with me a lot with the Leonards, his band Leonards, and we always talked and hung out together. And then he goes, hey, you want to get into this band we're doing? And and it became a 10-piece review band. Wow. Like white horns, funk with horns. and Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and I was singing, playing guitar. Cool. And I had magic pants. I could <laughs> dance like... <laughs> <laughs> like James Brown. It was awesome. And so we did that for a while and uh and we were playing some really cool underground clubs making some pretty good money. Some of these clubs paid pretty well. It was crazy. And uh and then I started a band called Big Mess. And uh that was with another lifelong friend of mine, Rex. Yeah, Rex Bailey and uh and I started playing with him, and then actually before him was Steve. Right. Big Mess started with with Steve, and uh, and then a guy called Fern, and we played for a while, and then Bernie came into the band, added him to the band, and then we started writing with the three of us. And then Steve decided he wanted to explore some other musical interests, and he... He moved on to another band, and I, and a friend of mine, Rex, I brought into the band, yeah. Rex Bailey, and so Bernie and I played for about seven, seven eight years together with yeah. Rex, Rex. Yeah. yeah, and then Rex and his brother joined us, so we had a we had a two singers in the band. It was awesome, and. Uh, we played for a while with that lineup, and during that time, the original guitar player from Easter started hanging out with me again. He he was back from Philly, <laughs> and we started doing Irish music, and we started a band called Shillelagh Brothers. And Shillelagh Brothers, we recorded a record, and Rex was in both bands. He was in Big Mess and Shillelagh Brothers. Yeah, and it's... Irish, but American Irish music, gotcha. and Shillelagh Brothers was spelled the American way, gotcha. and uh, and we had some really good success with that. We played some big shows, and we also had some movie and some films, and we ended up being nominated for Academy Award awesome. with a band called Pop for a movie called White Irish Drinkers, cool. and we had the opening cut and the closing song. Very nice. And during the time, Big Mess, we also kept recording albums and doing some touring and some playing and just kept building on that. Eventually, uh, Shillelagh Brothers, it started with, I think, mostly health issues. John had some health issues, and then Rex's brother had some health issues, so he started to take care of his brother. And he said, hey, can you find a new guitar player? Because I need to take care of my brother, and, and I just can't do all of it. We brought in a couple of guys that we tried to replace Rex with. It wasn't easy. We couldn't find, we went through several guitar players trying to find two or three that could replace him together as one, <laughs> and we couldn't find it. And then finally we found Dave Karate, who is now our current guitar player. And the way Dave Karate came into the picture is for quite a few years, Easter has been playing a tour every year. In the summer, we uh, we do a little reunion tour every year, and Dave came to play guitar to replace Mike Nesson. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> and uh, 
so we were hanging out and I and at that time I go, hey Dave, you think you'd want to come play with Big Mess too? And he goes, yeah, that sounds great. I love to play original music. I'd love to. I'd love to give that a shot. So then he came into Big Mess and then started playing with us, and he's been with us about four years. Four years. Yeah, we started writing songs and we've written quite a few songs with with Dave, and uh, and now we've recorded an album with Dave. And That's that album, right that album will be out in December. Okay. What's the name of it? And it's called Midlife Crisis, right. and that's going to be our seventh album. Seventh album. Yeah. Awesome. And the main tr track would be Midlife Crisis, uh, Skinny, Girls. Skinny Girls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I saw your Susie. Now you recorded this with and, Paul Rossler, right? And we recorded it with Paul Rossler, and then there's a couple of tracks on there where. Jack Grisham, a friend of mine, came in and sang a couple songs. Jack TSOL. Grisham from TSOL came in, and he's singing a song called My Name is Jack, and then another one called No Meat Now. <laughs> cool. And uh, and they're really cool, hard tunes, really fun. Nice. And that, that'll be out in December, so you'll be able to get some Big Mess and some Jack Grisham. And now you're also doing solo stuff, it, right? Yeah, yeah, and also Jack Grisham called us in, me and Dave, and we came and sang on his new single. Oh, really? What single? So that'll so that'll be out probably next year. Under TSOL. Or yeah, Jack? TSOL. Yeah, yeah. So they'll on the next single that he releases, we'll be singing backups. That's great, man. He's all, you guys can sing really good high. Can you do the high parts? <laughs> <laughs> so we did the high parts. Right and then uh, just. This month, I'll be releasing my first acoustic record awesome. called Chad called? Carrier, and the name of the album is Legend. Legend. And, uh, and that's all acoustic, and there's even a little bit of punk rock on there, acoustic. Rosser Paul Rosser, Rosser recorded that, and then I'll be having another one coming out next year. Awesome. I wrote the songs, and we're ready for the well. recording, another acoustic album for next year, cool. and probably another Big Mess album, because we have enough songs for two or three more records, so... So Saturday will be my record release party. And what day is that on? And October that's what? Saturday, October. <laughs> Sorry, November second. <laughs> yeah. November 2nd, right? Yeah, November second. <laughs> Project Barley. Okay. Project. Yeah, on on Saturday I'll be playing Project Barley, and that's in Lamita in the okay. South Bay, right. and from five till nine, okay. I'll be there, and then I have a couple special guests. That'll be coming out to play with me. Okay. It'll be a good show. Nice. One of those guests will be Billy Caldwell. <laughs> <laughs> the other one is a secret special guest. Right. She's she's our future. She's a young girl. She's going to come in, sing some great songs. You're going to love them. All original. Awesome. And what's the next big mess? Stuff? And then uh, the next big mess, big mess, we have a, our record release party is going to be on the 27th of December at St. Rock. And we're going to be opening for the babies. Are you talking to the babies of John Waite? The yes, the babies? babies, yeah. Wow, okay, cool. <laughs> That's all. Is John Waite going to be there? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think he's, not, I don't think he's playing with them anymore. Right, right. I don't think so but it's all the original all guys the original except guy, for him. Right? Yeah, That's yeah. Cool. And St. Rock's a nice place. And St. Rock's good, yeah, yeah. Very cool, man. All right, anything else you want to plug? And then if you want to come out Thursday night, I'll be playing at House of Blues in Anaheim at 7 o'clock. Very cool. My acoustic show and Dave Corati is going to be with me that night. Oh, you can, yeah, I'll, I'll plug all my websites. Oh, you can go to bigmessband.com, chadcarrieracoustic.com, and you can go there and you'll find all the links to everything else. And the uh, records will be released on lordcashpockets.com. Cool. Awesome, man. All right, cool. Peace. All right, thanks, man. Cool city. Club, you know the one that I am thinking of, looking for the cutest and dudes and chicks. You know I never get sick of it. We'll have some fun, we'll bash around, stomp around and get down to the sound. I'm living, I'm living, I'm living. Say 
I'm a zombie slut from hell, that's true. You better be careful or I'll get you. We'll have some fun. We'll bash around, stomp around, and get down to the sound. Hey. 